Welcome to the Gear, Bo- Gear Vlogs uh, Automotive Podcast, Season uh, 3, Episode 6. Um, if you're first time here, thank you for uh, stopping on by. Um, yeah, I know, I hate that. Um, I gotta get past that. <laughs> Just show I'm being genuine and uh, perfect. As always, if you're not following me on Clubhouse, I suggest you, I'd recommend you do if you want to be a live caller into this podcast. Right now, Clubhouse is the um, one method I'm using for bringing people on stage into the uh, podcast uh, for questions and uh, comments from you, the listeners. So, um, yeah, be sure to follow me on all my other socials. Lists will be uh, of all my other socials will be in the show descriptions. So, um, yeah, pretty much there's that. And I'm glad to have you here. And uh, let's get into the stories. And the first story we have today is from uh, let me go back up here Penafrina Batista sets two new world records in India. The Italian EV was already the fastest accelerating car in the world, as well as the fastest braking EV. So let's get into the story a little bit. Alrighty. The Pinafrina Batista made a splash at its first ever visit to India, where it set two new world records and solidified its place as the fastest accelerating road legal car in the world. In collaboration with Autocar India, the Italian EV ran a quarter mile sprint in 8.55 seconds and a half mile test in 13.38 seconds, as well as achieving a top speed of 358.03 kilometers per hour. That's about 222.46 222.46 miles per hour. The fastest a production car has ever been on uh, Indian soil, breaking the previous local record of 332 kilometers an hour or 200 miles per hour, which was also held by Autocar India. The two new world records were set at Indoor's Netrix facility with Omazad Sorabji at the wheel of the Italian electric supercar, while Rakua Kerpalanin managed to clock top speed of 357.1 kilometers or 221.89 miles per hour, officially becoming India's fastest woman. Hmm. Cool. Uh, Let's see here. We got some imaging here. So I figure you guys probably want to see some imaging of the cars. Here we go. Here on the test track. It looks like here they're doing the braking. Big wing. Big arrow wing. Nice. Nice, nice, yep, there we go, cool, 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 and uh, here we go, back to the rest of the article, um, the Pinafrina Batista wore Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires for the top speed runs, while the quarter mile and half mile runs were made on Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2R rubber, both of which are available to order when buying a Batista. Back in November 2022, Penafrina's all electric hybrid GT made a name for itself when the Italian marquee revealed its stunning acceleration and braking figures. Just 1.7 seconds. For the 0 to 60 or 0 to 96 kilometer hour sprint and a full stop from 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers an hour in just 10 or 
101.7 feet or 31 meters, making it the fastest accelerating road legal car in the world and the fastest braking EV. Now during Batista's Indian debut, the company's CEO had this to say. This year, the new Batista's owners are excited to explore the unprecedented performance of this design and engineering masterpiece. These speed records and the independent tests have validated our ambition to create a new generation of hyper and luxury car leading to the Batistas, whereby electric power delivers performance that is simply unachievable in the world of ICE powertrains. Based on the Rimac Nevera, the Pinaferina Batista is the most powerful Italian car ever made with a whopping 1,417 kilowatts or about 1,900 horsepower and 1,725 pounds of feet or 2,340 newton meters of torque producing produced by a quad motor electric powertrain with a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack that offers a WLTP cycle range of up to 295 miles or 476 kilometers. Just 150 units will be individually handcrafted at the company's location in Cam Cam Cambino, Italy each with a starting price of 2.34 million or 2.2 million euros at the current exchange rate. So, yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, let's move on to our next story. Here's how the update exhaust on the Dodge Charger Daytona EV sounds like. The unusual... Fratzonic exhaust system is more aggressive now. Okay. Let's read on about this here. When Dodge revealed its Charger Daytona SRT EV concept in the summer of 2022, it looked, it took everybody by surprise because it featured something that normally has no place on the electric vehicle, and it's an exhaust system. Dubbed the Fratzonic Chambered Exhaust System, its sole purpose is to produce a sound that's reminiscent of a big, burly V8 engine associated with the muscle car. And its loud pushing levels meters up to 126 decibels. The same as on the Hellcat powered Dodge. Hundred and twenty six decibels, the same as the Hellcat powered uh, Dodge, and it does this by moving air through a speaker box with chambers, plenums, pipes, and an exhaust outlet that comes out the back of the vehicle. It's a pretty cool conversation starter, but as our friends at MotorOne.com reported towards the end of last year, Dodge wasn't done tuning the sound of the Fratzonic exhaust, and this is where the video embedded at the top of this page comes into play because the Charger Daytona SRTs sound signature is different, more bass heavy than before. So yeah, here are some pictures of the car itself. And 
rest of the article keeps on going as Autoblog notes the latest version of the Fratzonic system adds more rumble and is much closer to the sound of an American V8 with the first version being too much on the electric ride. Presented at the Chicago Auto Show Concept and Technology Garage, the updated Dodge Charger Daytona EV concept can also be driven completely silent by the looks of it, which is a nice feature to have, especially when you don't want to annoy the neighbors. <laughs> it's worth noting that at this point that the Charger Daytona SRT EV is purely a concept car, but according to Dodge, next generation Charger and Challengers will be electric only, ditching the famous Hemi V8 in favor of an 800 volt architecture dubbed Banshee. And considering the tweaks made to the concept car, we can expect to see a version of the Fratzonic exhaust system in the upcoming electric muscle cars. As always, you can scroll through the comments and blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, well, let's see. I just hope they don't play any music on here, but I'm going to take a chance and uh, play us this video here. Let's have a listen. Make sure got the desktop audio here going up a little bit so you can hear it. And let's see what happens. Yeah, kind of like the rear bucket seats in the rear. As well as the uh, all glass roof or sunroof feature. And here we go. I'll leave it at that. Alrighty. Let's move on to our next story. Comment down below what you thought of uh, the sound. As well as the interiors of this concept. Of what you thought. Yeah, a lot of the features that they had going there. I hope I'm making it, makes it into the production. I like their uh, visual cues. Um, yep. Let's move on to the next story here. Uh, this here is from a press release from Dodge. Uh, 
let's go here. There we go. Be better see it better here. Last call, countdown teaser, video number one, run and hide. <laughs> okay. Dodge launches the first full teaser video leading up to the reveal of the seventh and final 2023 Dodge Last Call Special Edition model. Run and hide teaser foreshadows the powerful metamorphosis fueling the creation of the ultimate Dodge Special Edition ride. The next video teaser scheduled for March 1st, 2023. Dodge Last Call powered by Roadkill Knights Vegas event, set for March 20th, 2023 at the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, will host the reveal of the final Last Call Special Edition model. Ticket purchases and registration are now open at motortrend.com Dodge Last Call for Dodge Last Call powered by Roadkill Knights Vegas event. Celebrity appearances will highly our highlight, the one-day drag racing and performance festival, including a special performance by Grammy-winning superstar Diplo. Enthusiasts can follow the latest Dodge Last Call news on the brand's social media channels using the hashtag, hashtag Dodge Last Call and hashtag Roadkill Nights. Last Call Special Edition Re Reveal will be available for viewing via live stream on multiple online channels, including DodgeGarage.com. February 22nd, Auburn Hills, Michigan. Dodge is dropping the brand's first full video teaser ahead of the worldwide reveal of the 7th and final edition. Last Call Special Edition model. The teaser titled... Run and Hide suggest the powerful metamorphosis fueling the core of the ultimate Dodge Special Edition vehicle. Dodge will post new video teasers each week leading up to the global debut of the ultimate Dodge Performance Vehicle, which will take place during the Dodge Last Minute Call powered by Roadkill Knights Vegas event at the Las Vegas Strip on uh, March 20th. The teaser series was announced last week in short animated graphics. The next full video teaser is a premiere on March 1st. Each trailer reveals cues to the identity and performance DNA of the final edition Last Call vehicle. Dodge Last Call powered by Roadkill Knights Vegas. The Dodge Last Call powered by Roadkill Knights Vegas one day performance festival will not only reveal the final Dodge Last Call Special Edition vehicle, but also spotlight the electrified future of the brand with the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT concept also on display in the Vegas in Las Vegas. Enthusiasts can purchase general mission tickets to view the view information for the Dodge Last Call powered by Roadkill Knights Vegas event at motortrend.com forward slash Dodge Last Call. That's a mouthful. A live stream feed of the reveal will be available for viewing at DodgeGarage.com, the Dodge YouTube channel, Motor Trend YouTube channel, as well as Motor Trend Plus event activities will include small tire and big tire drag racing on the strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, Dodge thrill rides and simulators, a car show and sponsor vendor midway areas, a post event concert, and afterglow, and more. As with the previous Roadkill Nights events, the Roadkill Nights Vegas Performance Fest will be packed with celebrity appearances highlighting a by a special performance by Grammy Award-winning superstar Diplo. Blah, blah, blah. All the stuff we already covered. Um, yep, yeah, actually, I uh, dropped an email to Dodge... Um, corporate marketing so let's see if i can get a uh, media passes to attend if i get approved uh probably be covering events for that so i might do some live streaming from the event while i'm out there so yeah come on down below if you guys actually wanted to see me uh, get out to vegas and uh live stream this event 
So, yep, there we go. Okay. Moving on to our last uh, story. Uh, here we go. U.S. made EVs could get massively cheaper thanks to battery provisions in new law. Five to ten years hence, car makers have a huge opportunity to make much more cheaper EVs. That's the real goal, and here's how it might happen. The so-called Inflation Reduction Act, signed by President Biden in August 2022, expanded the purchase incentives for new electric vehicles and added one for used EVs as well. That is one way to get people interested in buying EVs, of course, but it actually is another part of the massive act that is likely to do far more for the U.S. manufacturing and adoption of EVs even than purchase incentives. Called Section 45X, it funds 10 years of production credits for manufacturing battery cells, photovoltaic solar cells, and components for wind energy and it has the potential to make EV batteries built in the U.S. so cheap that large swashes of Western cell and battery manufacturing will rush to locate in North America. Lies, damn lies, and battery marketing. Okay. One of the truthisms in the electric vehicle world is that no one will take in, no one will talk in detail about battery cost. Adoption adopted from a quote variously attributed to British Prime Minister Benjamin Desiree and U.S. humanist Mark Twain. Battery experts often say that. There are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and battery marketing. Whatever. For most of the past decade, $100 per kilowatt hour at the battery pack level, not the slightly lower cell cost, was thought to be the holy grail. In November 2021, battery costs for the industry overall was calculated at 132 kilowatt hours by Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Tesla is now thought to be at a below $100 kilowatt hour for a pack. Over the past year though, cell prices and hence pack prices have risen due to soaring prices for lithium and other battery metals due to both higher demand and supply hiccups. In 2021, a US Department of energy officials suggested $60 kilowatt hour was a reasonable goal at the cell level. That might mean $80 kilowatt at the pack level for vehicles in production in 2025 or beyond, including Tesla with the company's 4680 cells, a different format, vastly more VW group models, and GM do GM's dozen or more announced Ultima models. Car and Driver recently interviewed an experienced EV battery production specialist who asked not to be named. This person has worked for the worked for and consulted with numerous companies making cells in the US, Europe, Asia, and remains deeply in touch in today's with the cutting edge techno industry. The bottom line of the conversation was that, as the specialist put it, all the stories on the IRA are bearing the lead in editing phase, meaning to focus on something other than the main story and to mention the key fact only in passing lower down. Cutting up 
to half the cost of batteries. Our expert pointed us to section 45X, which is one fell swoop will cut one third to one half of total cost of EV batteries with both cell and packs built in the U.S. to quote U.S. clean tech inventor. I'm not going to pronounce that guy's name. <laughs> Interviewed by Bloomberg last week. Um, he goes, very simply, if you build a factory and run it in America and it makes a battery as the battery pack leaves the factory, you get $45 kilowatt hour. The subsidy covers $35 per kilowatt hour for battery cell production, but adds another $10 for battery packs. That's more than a third of the cost of making the battery pack. And the way things are going, it could be the entire cost of making a battery pack within 10 years span of the IRA. Our battery experts suggested this means all car makers assembling vehicles in the U.S. will ultimately build their own battery factories, whether through joint ventures like GMLG or designing and building their own cells like Tesla's efforts to bring its 4680 cells to market in large volumes. Designing and building cells directly reduces and eliminates profits to thir- to third-party cell makers, but it is far more far from the core competence today for most makers. Then again, how could they pass up on the huge credit and pack the size of a 131.0 kilowatt Ford Lightning amounts to about $5,895 for everyone that rolls off the line. And the article keeps going on and on and on. I'll have links to this story as well as all the others in the show notes. Um, yeah, comment down below what you guys think. And, uh, yeah. So, that's pretty much it for uh, this episode. And uh, see you next time.